The only reason I didn't land up using the Oppo Find X2 Pro as my daily driver in 2020 was due to its lack of wireless charging. It's now 2021 and Oppo have addressed this issue with their latest flagship, the Find X3 Pro. Not only does the Oppo Find X3 Pro deliver in wireless charging, but it's the world's first mass-produced smartphone to incorporate a microscope camera. That camera sits alongside three very impressive sensors, which all sit on a heel-like curved camera bump, which runs into a seriously stunning curved rear, and underneath that back plate sits the all-powerful 5 nanometer run Snapdragon 888 chipset, which powers the images visible on the Find X3 Pro's breathtaking 1 billion color low temperature polycrystalline oxide super AMOLED display. We get a 65 watt charging block in the box alongside a pair of earphones, USB type A to type C cord as well as a case. But now it's time to go ahead and unwrap the main feature. This is the glossy black version of the phone. You also get it in a blue color. It is just called blue. That is a matte finish. Like you can see, as I said at the start of the video, that curve going into the camera mount looks absolutely incredible. It takes 2000 plus UV control point mapping to get this right. 40 hour for that back glass, 100 plus molds used for this, and they heated them up all the way to 700 degrees Celsius. We get a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, 65 watt wire charging, 30 watt wireless charging, 10 watt reverse wireless charging, IP68 certification, and of course 5G. We have Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, a custom back glass, and of course an aluminum frame as well. Though that glossy black finish does certainly pick up quite a few fingerprint smudges, I've been told that the matte blue finish doesn't pick up a smudge at all. We get that one case in the box, the black one, it looks fantastic. And I also got the gray and the carbon fiber edition in the gift box that Oppo sent me. You can purchase these separately. I specifically like this wonderful carbon fiber back finish. We have a power button on the right hand side with a green accent. We also have a split volume rock on the left hand side, which I wish most phone companies would do. We have dual SIM 5G, no micro SD XC slot here. We have USB type C with 3.1 transfer speeds and we have a bottom and top using the earpiece dual stereo speakers rocking Dolby Atmos. That camera bump at the back is no exception for it standing out quite a bit compared to the other phones around, though the S21 Ultra and the iPhone still have a sizable camera bump. And let's not talk about where Oppo seems to have gotten the inspiration from when it comes to that back mold. Coming to the surface wobble, there's definitely a little bit of it when it comes to the Oppo Find X3 Pro. And once again, the design does stand out amongst the rest of them with that glossy back finish and curvaceous design at the back there with no standing out cutouts other than the exception of the iPhone looking pretty similar. That back looks absolutely phenomenal, but what about the front? Well, we're welcome to a 20 by nine aspect ratio, 6.7 inch QHD plus display with 526 PPI. LT PO AMOLED 1 billion color display, 100% DCI-P3 rating, 10-bit color. We also have 120 hertz refresh rate panel and 240 hertz touch sampling rates. And the curves on it is very subtle, much like the Mi 11 and S21 Ultra. When it comes to that color accuracy in the front, that 1 billion color 10-bit display, it looks phenomenal and it definitely shows on par with all the other incredibly looking and expensive devices that I have on my table here. And the white balance is on par with those as well, looking nice and crisp crisps compared to the rest of them with a crazy brightness of 1,300 nits. The bezels are very tiny, though not the smallest I've seen around. At least it's nice and symmetrical, unlike other phones that I can see on the table here, with the notch just being a tiny punch hole in the top left-hand corner. Of course, we also have QHD plus panel over here and that 120 hertz, like I mentioned before. And it definitely shows, comparing it to the 90 hertz, not so much against the Mate 40 Pro, but definitely shows it against the iPhone 12 Pro Max's 60 hertz panel on the right-hand side. And I must also add that this is an adaptive refresh rate panel that can switch from between 5 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz to preserve battery life. Stay tuned for my battery test coming pretty soon. We can also change a couple things when it comes to display such as the brightness, the color temperature. We also have a nature tone display very similar to true tone on Apple devices and we have this color vision enhancement here which we can personalize ourselves. We can pick up to 765 potential screen calibrations based on 
how our eyes work so that we're seeing the correct colors on the screen all the time. We also have a video color enhancer, which looks pretty great. And we have dark mode, which we see everywhere. What you don't see everywhere is that we have three different options for dark mode, a very deep black, then a medium gray and a light gray. And it doesn't work with too many third party apps, but it works with some of them. And of course, all first party apps as well. We also have an always on display here. Customization options are endless. When it comes to ColorOS 11.2 here, you can even create your own one. And once you're done with that, I must say you feel pretty chuffed to see it on your screen as soon as you lock your device. I still prefer sticking to the old school one though. And we also have an under display fingerprint sensor. It is indeed optical. Lots of personalization options over here when it comes to the fingerprint sensor animation. And we also have a shortcuts option comparing it to the optical sensor underneath the Huawei Mate 40 Pro and Mi 11, definitely quicker that time around. It's pretty much on par with the ultrasonic generation two sensor underneath the S21 Ultra. And it's definitely a lot faster than the 3D face unlock on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. We also have facial recognition on the Oppo, though it's limited to 2D face ID, which is unfortunately unsecure. The only secure ones here is the Huawei as well as the iPhone 12 Pro Max. But once again, the Oppo is quicker than that one since the iPhone you have to swipe up to get into the phone. We have a 32 megapixel F2.4 five layer plastic lens selfie snapper, and it looks phenomenal. We also have the portrait mode option over here, and there's practically no edge detection whatsoever. This is Technic recording a 1080p at 30 FPS selfie video on the brand new Oppo Find X3 Pro. It is a fully fledged flagship, but unfortunately still capped at 1080p and 30 FPS when it comes to selfie video recording. Let me know what you guys think of the audio and video quality when recording on the Find X3 Pro. We also have dual video mode like we're seeing on many phones these days. It looks pretty decent using the front and back cam. And of course you can change zoom levels as you're going using the main cam. Selfie pics at night don't come out the best, though there is a night mode option if you're keen on that. At the back of the device, the star of the show is the main and ultra wide sensor being the exact same lenses. That is a 50 megapixel Sony IMX 766 sensor. We also get a 13 megapixel telephoto sensor here. And for the first time, we get a micro lens and a ring light around it. Getting close and personal with the case here, it is absolutely phenomenal. The amount of detail, you cannot see this with the naked eye. Here is my COVID-19 mask that I wear. It looks great and jumping into the cork over here, my goodness, this is just a load of fun. I can't say I'm gonna use it all the time, but just knowing that I have the option to see, hey, what's inside of that object there, see the close up detail, even this paper background that I have, it actually picks up the pixels on which it was printed through. Talking about the ultra wide sensor, that is also fantastic. We can bin it down four to one to 12.5 megapixels. Same with the main. They look absolutely phenomenal. Pretty much exactly the same quality on both. We also have two times optical, five times hybrid. Those are pretty much the best. 10 times and 20 times digital aren't the best. We also have the portrait mode option, which looks fantastic, especially on buzz over here. Pretty much no edge detection whatsoever. So ever getting up close and personal using the ultra wide cam works great as a macro cam pretty much better than a dedicated macro cam, I would say as well. And we also have RAW and RAW Plus. RAW Plus is pretty much RAW using HDR. These are unedited. Now comparing it to the S21 Ultra on the right hand side, I must say the Find X3 Pro gives the Samsung a proper run for its money, picking up a hell of a lot more detail and moving on to the ultra wide shots. You can see how much more clarity there is on the Oppo device here, as opposed to the Samsung. When it comes to video, the Samsung is slightly better in stability, though I still think the quality and the crisp Happiness of the Oppo definitely shows. We also have 4K at 60 FPS with optical image stabilization enabled. Unfortunately, no 8K video over here, though 4K looks fantastic. 1080p, 60 FPS, slightly less detailed, still nice and silky smooth, looking great over here. And we also have 1080p, 30 FPS using the AI highlight mode, which highlights all objects, bringing through more detail and color. It looks great, unfortunately capped at 30 frames per second. 4K, 60 FPS, ultra wide is an option, and yes, it is available, looks fantastic. The stabilization on the ultra wide cam is even better than that on the main cam when recording video, thanks to it being such an ultra wide lens. We also have the full mode options on both cameras over here, that being the main and the ultra wide. And it gives a really nice, even wider look to it, pretty much like you're watching a movie, I guess that's kind of the intended purpose of the name 
full mode. We also have portrait video mode capped at 1080p 30fps still looks pretty great with minimal edge detection over here unfortunately capped at 30fps like I said it would have been nice to see that at 60 and we do have 1080p 60fps stability mode when well I'm running around right now I'm not sure if you guys decide to do that we have ultra steady mode over here capped at 60fps and ultra steady pro it loses a lot of detail though it is definitely more stable I think they need to try figure out a better balance here in terms of stability and detail. Of course, we can also use these cameras at night. Here is the ultra wide sensor and shooting onto night mode. The results are phenomenal. Even with the main camera over here really brings through all the colors in the scenery, even with the buzz shot over here, nice close and personal looks great. Of course, we have night video mode on the Oppo Find X3 Pro as well, which brighten things up, but once again, loses a tad bit of detail. Now we can charge up this phone before we head over to the software department. We have 60 5 watt super VOOC charging and we can use optimized charging as well if you want to preserve battery life over the years. We also have air VOOC and we can keep it quiet at night to charge even slower when it comes to wireless charging and of course we have 10 watt reverse wireless charging as well. When it comes to software we have Oppo's latest ColorOS 11.2. It is extremely stock like of course running over Android 11. It adds quite a few exceptional features that I'll get to in a second but first of all Google is packed in this device no need to worry. We even have OK Okay, Google straight here, Google Assistant that is, and she works as you would expect her to. We also have split screen multitasking over here, as well as floating windows and mini windows, which work seamlessly with each other. And if your fingers don't quite reach the top of the screen, we can easily slide up from the bottom right or left corner of the screen to do a pull down gesture to get to those top high heavy icons. We also have a little tab on the right hand side, which we can pull in, gives us a couple options. The best thing about it though is that you can translate the entire screen and we also have a system cloner over here for those times that you want to throw your phone to your friend or maybe one of your kids but you don't want them seeing all the goodies on your device. We can also change our wallpaper using a wallpaper creator with one originally on our phone. It gives it a couple different textures but nothing really changes too much. We do have other wallpapers in the personalization options menu and of course we can change the always on display and fingerprint sensor animation like I showed before and we can change a couple other things such as system colors. We can change the icon shapes like I showed a second ago and we can also jump into the notification shade and change those icons too and let's not forget about edge lighting the haptics on the find x3 pro are right up there with the best of the best and of course these speakers are too so let's go ahead and compare it to the s21 ultra and mi 11 with those dual speakers and dolby atmos The speakers sound phenomenal, but what about when using them while gaming? Well, of course we have that wonderful Snapdragon 888 chipset and we also have game space over here, which gives us a little pull tab from the left hand side where we can do a bunch of different things while we're gaming, or we can just block everything out and completely focus on our game, which works great. First game that we're gonna head into here is indeed Genshin Impact, highest possible graphics setting, max FPS that being 60, the game is capped at 60 FPS. And let me just tell you guys that don't already know, it's really tough to hit 60 frames per second, even with a Snapdragon 888 88 powered smartphone and it hit it no sweat over there. PUBG Mobile unfortunately no 90 FPS mode option available yet. I'm pretty sure the devs will get into that one pretty soon though we can hit up to 60 FPS with HDR graphics and we can even jump into UHD graphics on the Find X3 Pro. Unfortunately the frame rate is capped by 40 FPS. This is because of the game not because of the device. Don't be fooled by that. This phone can definitely hit 90 FPS running smooth the lowest graphics setting on this game but it just looks phenomenal in UHD. HD. When it comes to Dead Trigger 2, we can get all the way up to 
ultra high graphics as well as max FPS since the game doesn't have a FPS cap and the Oppo is sitting between 100 and 120 FPS. Real Racing 3 also doesn't have a frames per second cap. Unfortunately, we're sitting at 60 FPS here, not because of the phone, but because the devs haven't gotten on that one yet. Now we're gonna jump into three different benchmarks, starting off with an Tutu, as well as then moving to Geekbench 5 and jumping on to the last one, which is 3D Mark Wildlife, checking the battery percentage as well as the degrees in Celsius at the start of the test there. We're gonna compare that at the end once we've run through all three benchmarks. The Oppo is doing no sweat whatsoever jumping through these, though we'll have to see how sweaty it gets when it comes to temps at the end. And here we go. Temps have escalated quite a bit, jumping up 15.9 degrees in Celsius and it drained by 28.9 milliamp hours per minute, which is not the best, but you've also got to remember that we had competition mode enabled as well as high performance mode enabled. And two two results here, the Oppo Find X3 Pro is right at the top when comparing it to the Mi 11 Mate 40 Pro S21 Ultra and iPhone 12 Pro Max Geekbench a single core. It is definitely better than the S21 Ultra Mate 40 Pro and Xiaomi Mi 11, but you've also got a bare multi-core score in mind as well. And that is where the Oppo Find X3 Pro falls short of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, but still higher than its Snapdragon 888 brothers, the S21 Ultra and Mi 11. When it comes to 3D Mark Wildlife, we've got a score of 5701 and a frames per second on average of 34.1, which puts it above the Mi 11 and S21 Ultra, both rocking the same chipset. If I had to sum up the Oppo Find X3 Pro into one word, that word would have to be masterpiece. The elegance of its glossy back glass flowing into a familiar looking camera module makes the device stand out in more ways than just one. The quad camera setup on that curved mound is no slouch either with pictures coming out crisp and clear thanks to two top quality sensors and let's not forget about just how darn fun that micro lens is. After you're done staring at the beauty of its design getting into the device is just a snappy finger tap away and once inside you're welcome to a stock-like Android experience with extra Oppo goodies that actually make sense. Moving around the phone is a breeze thanks to that 120Hz refresh rate panel which when paired with the beefy Snapdragon 888 chipset destroys any game you throw at it. And let's not forget about that billion color LTPO Super AMOLED display which can hit heights of 1300 nits. Even though the competition out there is fierce, the Oppo Find X3 Pro checks all the right boxes for me this time around. If money is no object and you already have your eyes set on one of its expensive competitors, I urge you to rethink your decision, because not only can I recommend the Oppo Find X3 Pro to anyone looking for a true flagship, I can also safely say it's already in my pocket.